I've talked a lot about the importance of smart home sensors, but this, this is not your typical smart home sensor. If you find it difficult to grow and maintain healthy indoor house plants, well, this may be just what you need. Even if you do have a green thumb, this can make caring for your house plants even easier. My family spends $36 per year on a subscription to an app called Planta. We've got all different types of indoor plants in our home and it can be confusing to know when and how to water, mist, and fertilize each of them. While the app helps, I still don't actually know how healthy each plant is until I see the leaves turning brown and falling off. And at that point, it's a little late. But can a smart home sensor that costs less than an app subscription actually solve this? In this video, I'm taking a look at the ultimate plant sensor for Home Assistant, the Apollo Automation PLT-1. I'll show you what it does and how it can take all of the guesswork out of your indoor gardening. Everything that I cover is also featured in an article on my website. You can find a link to it along with any of the featured tech in the video description. On this channel, I cover how tech can make you more productive, so if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Let's do this. We have over a dozen different types of indoor houseplants. One that has given us the most trouble is a fiddle leaf fig. When healthy, I think these look great, but ours is quite sad looking, having lost most of its leaves, and the few that are left are, are just turning brown. Taking care of this plant has been a labor of love for my wife over the past four years, whereas I was ready to just call it a loss a long time ago. Could a smart home sensor actually help? The Apollo Automation PLT-1 is an indoor plant multi-sensor designed for Home Assistant, which is the home automation platform that I use. This sensor measures the soil moisture, air temperature, humidity, ambient brightness, and UV everything you need to know for taking care of houseplants. It also features a buzzer and an addressable RGB LED, so it can notify you if the plant conditions are outside the normal range. Soil moisture is measured with a capacitive sensor, which is said to be more accurate than resistive sensors. Soil temperature is measured using an optional temperature probe add-on. The air temperature and humidity sensor includes dust protection. On either side of the device, there's a boot button and a power reset button. The sensor I'm looking at is powered by a USB-C cable, but there is a battery-powered version that is larger. This non-battery version is four and a half inches long with the lower probe about three quarters of an inch wide and the top just over one and a half inches wide. The whole thing is super lightweight. The main body of the sensor is not rated for outdoor use unless adequately protected. You would need a separate sensor for each indoor plant, or you can move one sensor among your different plants. Setup is easy. The PLT-1 uses Wi-Fi to connect to Home Assistant through ESP Home. Once connected, you can configure automations, monitor data, and set alerts directly in Home Assistant. To get started, plug the sensor into power, then you want to connect your phone or PC to the sensor's Apollo hotspot. If you don't see a Wi-Fi sign-in prompt, open up your browser and visit http colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.1.1 here, you can select the Wi-Fi network that you want your sensor to connect to and input the credentials. Then in Home Assistant, go to Settings, Devices and Services, and you should see that it's been auto-discovered in your list of devices. Click Configure, and then Submit. You can choose an area for your plant sensor. Then click Finish. You can then go and pull up that sensor within your ESP Home integration. 
Here you can see numerous entities plus the RGB light, which you can toggle on and off. You can even click into it and change the color. We have entities for humidity, air temperature, brightness, the UV index, soil moisture, and temperature. At the moment, I do not yet have this in my plant and I do not have the soil temperature probe connected. If you have the battery power version, you can choose when and how the device should sleep and how often it should update its readings if you want to preserve battery life. You can install optional add-ons or integrations to visualize your plant's health in your Home Assistant dashboard. For example, you can pair the flower card with Open Plant Book to fetch information for your plants and monitor their health easily. And you can create automations for plant care based on the sensor's readings. For example, you can get alerted when soil moisture is low, turn on lights when the Lux reading drops below a certain level, or adjust your HVAC system or a humidifier based on air temperature and humidity around your plants. The RGB LED can be used for visual alerts, such as changing colors based on soil moisture or plant health. The buzzer can emit sounds for critical notifications like low moisture or reminders to check on your plants. Of course, you can also have it just send you a push notification from Home Assistant. In terms of what to improve, two things come to mind. First is aesthetics. I like that they went for a green case versus the white color of their other sensors. But depending on your viewing angle, it can just look like a tiny computer. One of the most challenging parts of a smart home is making the devices just disappear in the background. The battery powered version certainly helps since the USB-C cable on my version can stand out a bit depending on your setup. I realize this is not an easy thing to solve for. Second is fertilizer. Knowing when to fertilize and how much is an important part of caring for plants. Measuring the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium levels in soil is probably best done in a lab, so adding on this capability may be impractical, but that certainly would be neat. Apollo Automation already makes some of my favorite smart home sensors like the MSR2 and MTR1 for presence detection and the Air1 for monitoring indoor air quality. I'll leave links to my reviews of those products if you want to check them out. I'm excited to see Apollo Automation tackling an often overlooked aspect of managing a home like caring for houseplants. It's just another way to give you back time so you can spend more time enjoying your home and less time worrying about it. While this sensor hasn't had enough time to restore our fiddle leaf fig to vibrant health, I'm excited to give it a try. And at $28 for the non-battery version, well, my time was probably worth at least that. Let me know in the comments what you think of a smart home plant sensor like this or any other ways that you are using tech in your gardening. If you're interested in monitoring the indoor air quality of your home, you'll want to check out the video here. There are links in the description for all the featured tech in this video. I appreciate it when you use those links since I may earn a small commission at no additional cost to you. If you're interested in supporting this channel, consider becoming a member using links in the description or picking up merch like this shirt. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for tech reviews and tutorials that help you become more productive. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.